Uh, this weekend, we celebrate Respect Life Weekend, Respect Life Sunday, and you will find the um, envelope and, uh, and uh, pamphlet in our bulletin this weekend. And so I wanted to focus on this for this weekend, Respect Life. Um, of course, you, you probably know that um, Roe v. Wade was overturned earlier this year, um, which is a great victory for the uh, pro-life movement, but the pro-life movement still continues. There's still a lot of work to be done. And hopefully I don't have to convince you that as Catholics we must be pro-life because we believe as Catholics in the sanctity of all life and that life begins at conception. We heard in our uh, entrance antiphon today, within your will, O Lord, all things are established and there is none that can resist your will for you have made all things, the heaven and the earth, and all that is held within the circle of heaven, you are the Lord of all. The Lord creates everything, and he never makes mistakes. And again, remembering that abortion is always murder, which is always evil. It's what we call intrinsic evil. That means that no matter what the conditions, it cannot be allowed. This is one of those things that we hear um, from the uh, pro-choice uh, argument is, you know, well, what about things like rape or incest? That doesn't matter. It's still a baby, and it's still the murder of an innocent child. Again, God wills life, and God does not make mistakes. Life is always a gift from God, no matter what the situation is. In fact, when we think about that, when, when you think about that argument that, well, babies that were, you know, uh, conceived um, in situations like rape or incest, that those should be aborted. What does that say to those who were born in those situations, saying that their life has no value? Imagine hearing that yourself. It's always important to speak to others in a respectful manner about this truth, but always hold to the truth. And people sometimes say that the Catholic Church only cares about the unborn. This is something we've heard, especially after the overturning of Roe v. Wade. Well, you only care about the unborn, so nothing else really matters for you. But nothing could be further from the truth. We have many great organizations set up to help mothers and to help fathers. There are plenty of organizations uh, in our diocese to help those in crisis pregnancies to help those who are struggling with the effects after abortion. And that's another thing that people don't like to talk about, that abortion always leaves a scar. You'll hear that sometimes people will say, well, if women have an abortion, it doesn't matter. You know, nothing, nothing will happen to them. They, you know, they'll just be better for it. But abortion always leaves a deep wound. We have people that can help with those who are dealing with those wounds. If you're someone who's dealing with those wounds, my prayers are for you. And please know that we have programs like Project Rachel or Rachel's Vineyard that can help in those situations because that is a serious situation that we need to have the resources to help people with. And speaking of having uh, resources to help people, um, every parish in our diocese is asked to have a representative for Walking with Moms in Need, which is a new uh, organization started in our diocese. So if you are interested in helping with this new uh, program, Walking with Moms in Need, please let me know uh, so that I can uh, get you uh, in contact with those in the diocese uh, to help with that program. So that's one part that I wanted to talk about, that you know, we still have work to do and we still need to be uh, caring for those uh, who are going through crisis pregnancies and those who are uh, dealing with the effects of abortion. I also wanted to talk about that it's still our duty to vote pro-life. The church has made it clear time and again that pro-life is the preeminent issue today. 
We should be reminded that the United States bishop said, the threat of abortion remains our preeminent priority because it directly attacks life itself. And a Catholic cannot vote for a candidate who favors a policy promoting an intrinsically evil act, such as abortion, euthanasia, assisted suicide, deliberately subjecting workers or the poor to subhuman living conditions, redefining marriage in ways that violate its essential meaning or racist behavior if the voter's intent is to support that position. In such cases, a Catholic would be guilty of formal cooperation in grave evil. It's a serious thing. The church has called us to stand up for those who cannot defend themselves. God has called us to protect the sanctity of life. Even after Roe v. Wade, and perhaps more than ever, we must support pro-life politicians. And again, remember that preeminent means it's the most important. Other considerations are secondary only. So when we're looking at who we're going to vote for, we must look at their stance on life first. One of the things that I've heard uh, in the past, and this really, I'll be honest, irks me, is I've heard people say, well, I vote for the labor union. Whatever the labor union tells me to vote for, that's what I vote for. Even if it goes against what the Catholic Church says, I'm a union person first. We have to be Catholic first. Our Catholic identity must come first, even when politics are involved. As Bishop Hying says, I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I'm a Catholic. That's how we must think when we go to vote. We cannot be Catholic and pro-choice, simply put. Because pro-choice is pro-murder and anti-God. Now, Father, you can't talk politics. I'm not. I'm talking morals. Priests have a duty to speak faith and morals. Politicians have made abortion political. And so I must speak about faith and morals. And just a reminder that it is our duty to vote. According to the Catechism of the Catholic Church, it is the duty of citizens to contribute along with the civil authorities to the good of society and a spirit of truth, justice, solidarity, and freedom. The love and service of one's country follow from the duty of gratitude and belong to the order of charity. Submission to legitimate authorities and service of the common good require citizens to fulfill their roles in the life of the political community. For this reason, submission to authority and co-responsibility for the common good make it morally obligatory to pay taxes, to exercise the right to vote, and to defend one's country. So to say, well, I'm not going to vote because I don't like either of the candidates or any of the candidates, that's not an excuse. It's still our responsibility to vote and to vote based on the uh, issues, not necessarily based on the people. So again, this Respect Life Sunday, let us pray especially for an end to abortion. And let us pray also for mothers and fathers in difficult pregnancies and for those with inadequate care for their children, that they may have the resources needed for their situation. We also pray for all of those struggling with the wounds of past abortions, that they may receive God's love and mercy, and that they may be able to forgive themselves. God loves all life. May we love God by loving his creation as well.